Welcome into the Brooks Bench with your host, Brooke, a.k.a. Shiggy, and my co-host, Megan. What's up? If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share. We appreciate all your guys' support. If you want to get more information, more daily stuff, join our Discord. Follow us on all social media. Um, but we're here for the All-Star Recap. Before we get into it, let's go to the news. All right, so a lot of updates. A lot of things have happened. Um... Probably the most important, not most important, the biggest shocker that happened this last week. Marina Mabry was traded to Connecticut from Raya Jefferson and Rachel Banham and picks on each side, right? Um, if you want the full breakdown of the trade, I will pop up the link to the video that I already broke down. But let's get Megan. Megan, let's get your reaction on the trade. Honestly, it's, it's good for Connecticut. I think they add a lot of depth, a shooter, a score to their team. Mm -hmm. um for fantasy purposes i don't know how much i like it because <laughs> it might mess up lineups but yeah. outside of that i think it, it looks good i think connecticut's really trying to make a run for championship this year i agree um yeah. my opinion i go more into depth like i said in the video i put out a couple days ago but like i said connecticut needs to get over the hump mm -hmm. um i feel like I feel like Mabry brings a solid three-point shot that they do need. Um, so it's good for Connecticut. I think it's good for Chicago. We all know that they probably weren't going to win this year. Um, so they're just building for the future. They have a solid core. Um, and I, I think I I think I do like it in, all in all. But it was interesting that Mabry did ask for the trade. Well, and, and for Chicago, when you say it's good for Chicago – I do think, like you said, they're trying to just, you know, rebuild. They reality yeah. is they're not probably going to win a championship this year. Yeah. But the thing about it that's like kind of throw me through a loop is how easy they were letting Marina go when they gave up so much to get her. Exactly. Right. They gave up all those picks to get her. So it's just kind of, I I want to know more of what really took place behind the scenes, but. I mean, she requested the trade. It didn't look like she yeah. had any beef, honestly. To yeah. me, it didn't. It looked like she was getting along with all the girls. Um, obviously, I think her production did go down with Kennedy Carter's ascent, doing very well. Um, and I think, I think it's a good part ways. I think yeah. it is in the long run. Um, but if you want the full extent, in my opinion, check out the video. Meg, any other comments on this? Yeah. Excited to see how it plays out in Connecticut. I know. Oh, I did want to ask a question. Do you think Mabry's coming off the bench? Or is she going to start? Um, Man, that's tough. Ty Harris has to play the point. <sighs> you can't say Dijanae, in my opinion. I know. That's so hard. And Dijanae's having a good year. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I think she comes I, off the bench. Yeah, I think so, too. That'd be disappointing. That would, honestly, that would be, that would be kind of, if I was in Dijanae's shoes, I would feel hurt if. If I got sat, yeah. That'd be so disrespectful. the kind of year that she's kind of had so yeah. far, she already was an all-star, which we thought was kind of a snub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you bring in someone to play over her. <laughs> and she, and she played her uh, role for how many years coming off the bench? Yeah. She waited all that time. But Mabry is not a bench player. That's tough. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. We have tough. to wait a whole month until we know what's gonna go down, but I'm excited. I'm excited. But let's really get into the other stuff. So WNBA is eyeing a 44 game season in 2025. Woo, let's grow. I'm here for it. How do the players feel? I don't know. It's a long season. I think they would like it because the whole goal is to be able to uh, move away from having to go play overseas. A yeah. lot of these girls, the season is not the end for them. They go from the season mm -hmm. and then they used to go right overseas and continue to play games. So yeah. I don't think having more games is going to be a bad thing. I just hope that as the WBA grows and we have more games, we pay these ladies. <laughs> Agreed. With that said, thank you for saying that WNBA's new media deal will pay them $2.2 billion over the next 11 years. Now, I don't think anything's official yet, but let me break down what um, is being said. So it averages out to $200 million per season. League is currently making $60 million per season. Um, this media deal would be between ESPN, NBC, and Amazon. Um, and right now the current deal they have is between Disney, Ion, CBS, and Amazon, uh, but it will expire in 2025. 
Um, what do you think? I'm here for it. I do know that this is probably going to make that the WNBA app prices uh, go up, which I I think it already. So the only thing I'm not sure is because we've been members. So we, they honored our same um, price as last year. Mm -hmm. But I think for other people that were new signing onto the app, the price had already went up. Um, But I think, yeah, the league, the WNBA uh, league pass, just their, yeah, their whole app. So I think that it might go up again. (laughs) Well, the thing is, I don't know, like in the details, it says ESPN, NBC, and Amazon will all have their own WNBA packages. That's concerning. That sounds like separate memberships to me. Mm. So I don't know. We're going to need clarification on that. How that will, well, because, you know, if they're not renewing with Disney, but ESPN, will ESPN add it to their plus membership? Maybe. Um, you know, Amazon, are they just going to add it to their prime membership? Prime membership. So I wonder if there's going to saying. be yeah. goals like that, yeah. uh, which will be helpful for people that are already subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to throw this out here. Okay, this deal spans over 11 years. I think yeah. in 11 years, this this offers a low ball. Yeah. Because in 11 years, things are going to tra- change drastically. We're, in 11 years, we're going to have Juju in the league. Hidalgo yeah. in the league. We're going to have Paige Beckers in the league. I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's big names coming into the league. And I feel like over 11 years, by that 11th year, it's going to be such a low ball offer. I don't know. But a win is Maybe a win. Maybe there, there might be stimulations to be able to. Yeah, stipulations. <laughs> stipulations. <laughs> uh, to, you know, make make edits to the contract i don't know because it's not out yet we haven't been yeah. able to really get into it but yeah they, i'm sure they're gonna work something i think they know that they're gonna grow um unless they're thinking like you know this is just you know on the media side that they might be able to bring in money other ways so yeah yeah we'll see like we said it's not official yet it's just out there of what is to come uh, yeah. But with that said, other partnerships, New Balance and WNBA have agreed to a multi-year partnership. Uh, it says New Balance will create authentic broadcast, digital and retail content featuring New Balance athlete Cameron Brink. Good for you, Cameron. Uh-huh. Um, Bumble and the WNBA are partnering to champion to champion connection through shared interests in women's sports. <laughs> I don't know what that it all entails, but hey. Partnerships, partnership. Uh, DraftKings has become the official uh, sports betting and daily fantasy partner for the WNBA. Can we get a new uh, WNBA, I mean, women's fantasy platform, please, as well? <laughs> ESPN, you're killing us. Um, okay, let's get into some record breakers. Caitlin Clark is number one in assists, leading with 194. Clark is the fastest player in WMA history with 400 points, 200 plus assists, and 26 games. She also broke the WNBA single game assist record with 19 assists. Um, yeah, I said it last video. Clark right now has taken the lead in the rookie of the year race. I think we can all come to agreement with that. Um, but don't get me wrong, Angel Reese is still killing it. And we'll get into that when we get into the all-star, you know, our all-star recap. Um, Asia Wilson set a new WNBA record, uh, single season, Jesus, WNBA regular season record with six consecutive games with 20 plus points and 10 plus rebounds. Mm. Right now, I don't really think it's close for MVP. Like, would you say that? Like, yeah, if she doesn't get it this year, I don't know. I don't know what's I, like, this I might should... have to jump on the, the bandwagon that Enrique said that it's just all political. Yeah. yeah. This would be crazy. Right now, I think she's unanimous. Like, who is near her? I don't... I mean, obviously, when Nafisa was healthy, I would say Nafisa would be number two in the MVP race, but still, Asia would be the clear winner. But right now, yeah, it's Asia, and no there's, no, there's no one touching her right now. Um, so we had some a new addition for Unrivaled, uh, Ryan Howard. They didn't uh, announce anyone the last couple of days. Um, so the newest one was Ryan Howard that we didn't discuss. And they also released that players receiving top salaries would get around $350,000. Mm. I'm excited. Yeah. I really can't wait to watch. It's going to be it's gonna be cool. Like, Arike is going to cook everyone. <laughs> one-on-one? Like, yeah. it's one-on-one and 3v3, like. Enrique is going to cook. Oh, my God. So many people. It's going to be insane. Uh, and lastly, did you see Phoenix's new uh, practice facility? Of course I did. 
It's beautiful. I'll pop up pictures. But basically, Phoenix Mercury just opened their new $100 million practice facility. Wow. Words are hard today. Practice <laughs> facility during All-Star Weekend. So it has 10 baskets, strength and cardio training area, indoor and outdoor turf training area, team meeting room with theater-style seating, hydrotherapy room, hot and cold plunge tubs, underwater treadmill, sauna and steam room, player lounge, full kitchen. Ooh, I like this part. Full kitchen with private chef, snack bar, pantry, and smoothie bar. Locker room. With vanity stations. This is this is dope. I was looking at the pictures. This is nice. It's I wish clean. they would have dropped even more pictures on it. I know. But, I, uh, I'm high because they named the courts after the courts Diana. Diana. Yeah. That's cool. She's only yeah. been there her whole career, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like a bummer because like Sue was also there with Seattle. And Seattle just opened their new practice facility. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. dang, Seattle, you kind of dropped the ball a little bit there, you know? But they um, shot out a little. Yeah. They had the... um. I think Jewel was doing a tour. They have this uh this wall remembrance okay. wall yeah. thing and it incorporates like Sue, Brianna, all them. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, but Sue was there her whole career and one of them I know, know. I know. Don't worry, next year they're gonna be like, <clears throat> Don't worry, Sue, we got you. They're gonna build her a statue. Yeah. That's what they should do. Build her a statue. But okay, that's a that's it with the updates. Let's get into the all star weekend recap. Okay. So first off, before we get into it, NECA had announced on Twitter before Friday's skills competition and three-point contest that the winners of each contest would win $55,000. And let me put that into perspective. The WNBA, their bonus for these players, if they participate, the winner gets $2,575, and each participant only gets $1,030. So $55K... I bet you all those players that turned it down that need a little bit more money was like, dang, notice uh-huh. <laughs> fifty five thousand. So it was it was good. It beefed up the competition a lot. P- players were trying, and I feel like every All Star like game and stuff, they're all like, eh, like just having fun, like whatever. But this time, people were sprinting. They were trying hecka hard, and that's what I liked about it a lot. Um, so Meg, did we pick? No, we didn't pick. We didn't pick players because they didn't put all the contestants quick enough for our video yeah yeah we, we did, did on it. our live though right before we but... did on our live um uh, we did not pick the skills correctly who did you pick i picked uh kelsey mitchell i uh, yeah you did who did i end up picking you picked i think you agreed with me <laughs> no i did not i think i picked mabry I picked oh, Mabry. Uh, I did pick Mabry. So anyway, we were wrong. Alicia Alicia Gray. Alicia Gray, you are so quick, girl. And and those bounce passes, I'm telling you, if you guys were watching the skills competition, the first whatever, obstacle, challenge, whatever, is a bounce pass. Three bounce passes. Boom. Uh-huh. If you didn't get that right, you were already slow. Because Alicia Gray's bounce pass is quick. Everyone else was bouncing it slow. And then, boom, she was off to the races. I should have known right then that she was going to win. But anyway, she bit out Sophie Cunningham. Sophie Cunningham barely squeaked in by 0. 0.2 seconds to get to the, the the final. But hey, Alicia Gray, 55K. Congratulations. So then we head into the three-point competition. And I think a lot of our live, everyone was like, Kayla McBride, Kayla McBride, Kayla McBride. Maybe a Marina Mayberry sprinkled in there. Meg, Meg went with Alicia Gray. Uh-huh. And the only reason I didn't go with Alicia Gray, her shot was a little slower. And every year they talk about if your shot is slow, you're not going to have enough time to hit, you know, to make all your shots. You're not going to get to all the racks. So that got in my head and I said, I'm just going to go Kayla McBride. She came in second to Allie Quigley back in the day. So I mean, uh-huh. she's going to come in first. Boy, was I wrong. She was <laughs> close. She did score what? I think it was 21. But yeah. John Quell went <laughs> off. Yeah. John Quell went off her first round for 26 points i was like okay girl and alicia gray i think had 23 in the first round and i was like okay that's solid then they go into the final and john quell messed up beginning the first rack she she rushed her shot were we not yeah. talking about that yeah you can see her shot changed it was like the first round we were like oh she's not gonna make it she didn't get all yeah. her shots off but she tried to rush it in her second round and she missed more so me and Meg were like, if she just would have did the same approach, she probably would have made more shots, right? And Meg, how did how did John Quill end it? But it's still crazy though, because it came down to her last shot. Last shot. 
and then she was rushing and butchered it. That was probably her worst shot. The whole it the was whole the worst shot. She sh it was just short. Yeah, and you know when like you kind of like get yourself caught up, and then you like just short arm it. That's yeah. exactly what happened to John Quell, and I was like, oh my god. And it's one of the ones too. Like as soon as it's leaving your hand, you know it's bad. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. But and the thing it was, was so good. And the thing was though, the coverage. We need to we need to fix the coverage of the WNBA All Star Game because whoever was doing it for Phoenix. Never again. Literally, they got people's names wrong when they were announcing the rosters or yeah. the participants. Then, like, the count for, like, every shot made was so behind. Like, so we didn't know how many shots they made. And I was just like, dude. And the time was together. behind, too. Oh, the time on the yeah. shot clock was behind. So that part was frustrating. But with all that said, Alicia Gray won the three-point contest. Took home $110,000. Megan, tell them the fact you saw. About the hundred ten thousand, and this is not even a good fact, guys. It's not. She in one night, she literally took home sixty three percent of her normal salary. Yeah, that that's just astonishing. Like that makes no sense to me. But I'm not gonna harp on it too much because I know we're moving the league in the right direction. But it yeah. cannot come soon enough because that's yeah. just wow. Yeah, so I think her salary is like $186,000, I think, and she won 110 in one night. Get that bag. Everyone was hyped for her, too. Like, you could tell. Even Asia. Yeah. You see Asia with her little phone. Just yeah. hyped. So, like, congratulations. That's never been done. She's the first player to win the three-point contest and skills. All right. Congratulations. Now everyone next year is going to be like, I want to participate, please. I'm hoping <laughs> next year, though, Sabrina and Caitlin Clark do participate. They'll both have their breaks. Not an Olympic year. Not her coming right out of college. So I really hope we get that matchup. I feel like it's going to bring a lot of attention um, and just grow the game. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. But the All-Star game is crazy. Team WNBA defeated Team USA 117-109. And I'm pretty sure our predictions, we all said Team WNBA would defeat, on, on record, on our recording, Team WNBA would defeat Team USA. Uh -huh. And I know I said Enrique for MVP. Did you say Enrique for MVP? Yeah, I think we all did. Because, one, it's the it's the revenge. It's the revenge plot. Um, She did start off a little rough in the first half, but then the second yeah. half came, and she didn't miss one shot. Arike was cooking and it's crazy because people that you know are just tuning in now like you know newer fans they're like oh Arike is nice like who is this yada yada bro just watch any Dallas game Arike is uh -huh. cooking in every Dallas game and when she's hot she's not gonna miss she said fourth quarter Arike from the third to the fourth third and fourth quarter <laughs> but uh -huh. it was good I mean what do you think about it Megan what do you think about it? Just give me some. Opinions. I mean, I think we all felt that she was going to have a great game, especially because of all the talk around her and uh, USA basketball. So I, I knew she was going to put on her show. Um, I thought it would be a little difficult for her to just run away with it, which I mean, we saw in the beginning because mm -hmm. USA actually played right in mm -hmm. the past. You know, it wasn't so like defense oriented and very like people actually playing. Mm -hmm. It was lackadaisical. So yeah. uh, because the U.S. team had to kind of prepare, I mm -hmm. thought it was a more a little more competitive. It wasn't there was still some laziness on D and Defense, things like yeah. that. But, yeah. you know, overall, I would say it was one of the more competitive games, even though WBA kind of ran away with it. Are you concerned? On Enrique's our... shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it was all Enrique. Are you concerned about Team USA? No. What do you say to all the people that are like, the selection committee got it wrong. We're going to lose, yada, yada, yada. You know, I think there's a lot that goes into it. Do I think Arike should have been on the team? Yes. I would have to hear their reasoning, but I'm sure it's just they, they also look at chemistry. They look at, like, who gels together, what rotations they can do, things like that. So, I don't know, but... Yeah, I struggled for a while to figure out, like, who Arike would have been good at replacing. And I kept coming to uh, Copper. But the thing with Copper is she has that chemistry now with Diana Taurasi, with Brittany Garner. Like, they're bringing girls that play, like, from teams already together. 
that I think they think will gel better. So I don't know. I don't know though. Well, you have to take into consideration Enrique took herself out of the Well, yeah, but out of the USA pool. I think she only did that after she already probably heard rumors that she was gonna be the one cut. So But that's a rumor you just made. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But saying... why why else why else would she just drop out like that? And then and then go on social media and stuff and say that it's that it's a political thing. I don't know. Come on. I mean, that leads to me. I'm not going to assume. Yeah, I guess. I'm whatever. not going to assume. It is what it is, but she did yeah. take herself out of the pool. We don't know what would have happened or what could have happened. Um, But I'm not concerned about Team USA. Um, People who are saying the selection committee got it wrong. Um, Talk to their medals that they've won every single year. Um, If they lose... Then maybe they did get it wrong. If they don't bring yeah. home the gold, then maybe they didn't. You know, I'm not worried. But it just shows how competitive the league is. And yeah. like, okay, let's be real. Team WNBA had nothing to lose. Team USA. Okay, have you ever played against a team that has nothing to lose in a real sport? They're the most dangerous. Yeah. Let me tell you, a team that has nothing to lose is the most dangerous team. Let me tell you. Um, but you can tell Team USA still has so much. They need to gel. It's, uh-huh. and we obviously know there's not a lot of time to gel, but there was things like, for example, Chelsea Gray is used to her team with the back cuts. She was looking for that whole game. Certain players were kind of standing there and she's like, dude, move kind of thing. But it's like just that chemistry. Asia, we have Asia and Brianna Stewart and I'm okay with relying on them to carry us to another goal. Uh-huh. But you know what I'm saying though? Like there's just so much talent on the USA team. I think they'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, but I I don't really have much to say about it. I feel like certain players were off. Sabrina wasn't hitting a lot of threes, and I feel like we're gonna need her. Um, who else was off? Jackie, Jackie didn't look too good. Um, but our bigs were good. Brianna Stewart, Asia, Brittany Griner, um, Diana Trossi looked good hitting those threes. She was a consistent three point shot for us. Jewel Lloyd did not look good. Uh-huh. She had those two mi- that those missed three pointers. They're like oh. You know, a little rough. Um, but Team WNBA, Arike, 34 points. Angel Reese had a double-double. Alicia Gray, 16 points. NECA, 14. Kelsey Mitchell, 13 points off the bench. They were killing it, right? Um, but like I said, it's tough to defeat a team that, you know, has nothing to lose, especially when you're just having fun and you're, all your three-pointers are falling, right? Uh-huh. Um, but Arike did set a new WNBA All Star record with 34 points. Caitlin Clark set a rookie assist record uh, with nine assists in an All Star game, and then Angel Reese becomes the first rookie to record a double double in WNBA All Star game history. But do you see like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese? They're both having good seasons, and we can yeah. we can celebrate both. You know, yeah. um, and it's just cool they both did something well in in their first All Star game. Like, isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. Same with Arike. Broke record, 34 points, most in w- uh, All-Star history. And deservingly so, she won the MVP. Mm-hmm. So we were all right. I don't know what Brooke said. I think Brooke said Dierica. I think she said both. Do you remember? Did she say Dierica? I don't know, but Dierica wasn't really there. No. They kind of just stuck with, stuck with Arike. They're like, yeah. just get Arike the ball. She'll keep shooting. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, but let us know. Are you guys concerned for Team USA? I just I just want to know. I just want to hear you guys' opinions. Um, and yeah, how do you guys feel about that Maybury trade? That was crazy. The Maybury trade came out of nowhere. So that was that was cool. Hopefully more trades to come. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in. Next week we'll be previewing the Olympics. Um, I know they'll be playing some games, but we're also going to preview their schedule because there's going to be a lot of group plays and kind of how we think and basically, yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share. Uh, we'll be back next week. Peace. Peace.